we've heard today about being bold in religion, but I'm wondering whether you, you, you cut through without that, or do you follow Paul's example at all? Yeah, I mean, I can just share Father Jay real, real quick. Um, we've been to Speaker's Corner, right? In London, where yeah. they have the debates, and I've debated with Muslims. I've, I've used the word of God to debate with Muslims. I've, I've done that the, um, apologetic style. Yeah. Um, and then also I've just gone in with the hammer. Sure. Um, I've just gone in with a hammer concerning Islam. And um, the most successful fruit has been when I've come in with a hammer. Mm. The truth was so. Mm. Muhammad was a yeah. sinner, needed a savior. Uh, he can't right. save anybody. He's in hell right now for eternity. Yeah. And if he could return, he would come and plead with you to listen to what I'm saying. Yeah. That's so more fruit than the yeah. apologetic style. But also yeah. what I would say is there's a space and, a, and something yeah. awesome for that style. But Daniel Chan, an evangelist um, that we both, Jay, Jay, Jay knows, I know, he said this, he said, the most fruit he's seen with people from other religions mm. coming to Jesus, Sikhs, Hindus, and Muslims, yeah. have been through the power, the demonstration of power, That's the right. Holy Spirit, mm. not just words, but the demonstration yeah. of power, people have been healed yeah. mm. um, through mm. the, the power of God, and then, well, wow, you, you healed me in the name of Jesus, so mm. that's what I would say. Um, I think there's a scripture, First uh, Thessalonians chapter 1, verse 5. Because our gospel came to you, not simply with words, but also with the power and with the Holy Spirit and with deep conviction, you know how we lived among you for your sake. And so uh, the gospel comes not only in word, but with power and with a demo, or another version might say with a demonstration of the Spirit's power uh, and with deep conviction. So the gospel in and of itself has the power to, mm -hmm. to cut. And, and that's what we preach, you know, Christ crucified. Mm -hmm. To the, to the Gentiles a stumbling block and to the Jews, sorry, to the Jews foolishness and to the Gentiles a stumbling block. So the, the gospel works and even for me when I go to places, just straight proclamation of the gospel. Mm -hmm. um, you know, Paul, he's, sorry, I, I think what you refer referencing to is like when he walked through and he said his heart was, he stirred yeah. by the yeah. idols which he saw. Yeah. So yeah. He, he looked and he saw um, a statue, one of them yeah. gods, and he said to an god an god an unknown god, he said, this is the god that I want to preach yeah. to you. And then he, he started with, you know, God made from Adam or from one blood every every nation and every tribe, basically the human race. He was preaching Genesis. So he, he went to me and he preached the gospel of Jesus Christ. He even spoke about judgment. Mm -hmm. So God has said that when he's going to uh, judge you all by the man he is appointed, Jesus Christ, I think Acts 17, 31. Mm -hmm. And so the, the gospel, the gospel, the gospel, the death, the burial, and the resurrection, the sin of man, which is also very important to mention because people... Uh, need to know about sin and the consequence of sin. Yes. So one of the things is sometimes people say, you know, I'm not really a bad person, I haven't really done yeah. bad things, I'm a good person that does bad things every day. Actually, no, the heart is deceitful and desperately wicked, it mm. deceives even them to think they're a good person. Mm. And we might think we're good because we compare ourselves with people that are really bad, mm. but actually when we stand next to the moral law of God, we, we realise we're actually yeah. we're wicked sinners, mm. wicked at heart, wicked in thought, um, all these yeah. things. Just to add, I think as well, you're referring to the, the scripture where Paul says, to the unknown God, yes, that's, yeah, that's let right. me declare to you about this unknown God. And he used what they what they, what they they know and can relate yeah. to, to proclaim the truth. Yeah. There's a space for that. Like in the, with people in the New Age, they mm -hmm. will say that Jesus is the high ascended master. And so I will come in from that angle and say, you even esteem Jesus as the high ascended master. But let me really tell you, like that, why, why Jesus is the high ascended master, and we can then talk about the resurrection, mm -hmm. and the fact that he ascended to be the right hand yeah. of the Father. So we can use things to preach the truth. I, that's for sure. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I think there are some. Hello. Yeah. Yeah. Do you ever say, like I do, with Muslims especially, having asked them questions about the religion, I say, well, you you agree that my God answers prayer. That's why you ask me to pray for your new staff that come, etc. But you need to know that the God that I love and know yeah. is the only one that's alive today. Amen. Amen. So yes, for I'd sure. Say. Muhammad's dead. Buddha's yes. dead. He's in the yes. grave. In yes. fact, yes. Muhammad's in yes. hell right now. Yeah, yes. yes. that's right. That's the reality. He's serving yes. He's in eternity. Yes. 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 You're really yeah. um, praying to someone that's dead yeah. and not alive. That's right. Yeah. Yeah, so that's okay. For sure, yeah, absolutely. Okay. Yeah, first of all, thank you so much. That was so powerful. I did not know what to expect today, but 
something is stirring inside of me. Mm-hmm. And um, so my question is when, uh, you know, I find it sometimes easier for me to speak to people like online, on social media, strangers. I went on a podcast last week, 1.4 million people, and I get hate comments, I don't care. But my friends, the people that are close to me, so in working environments, for example, in an office environment where it's only 20 people, in, yes. you know, how do you share it there? I went last week, I went, I went to Spain, my best friend of 15 years, she lives in Spain, She's complete opposite than me. She's not a Christian at all. And I I suffered in the past from addictions, smoking cigarettes, so she's currently suffering from addictions. But I went with the purpose to yes. just like to give a bit, but it's, it was hard. Like and until now, I'm not, I know you said like it's not us that do, but I try to share it with my closest friends that I find this are the hardest one to reach. Yeah. And the, the environment's in a work environment. So how, how do you deal with that? I mean, me, me and Jay both have worked in the workplace, so, I mean, do you want to answer from your experience? Yeah, no, from, from my experience, like, uh, I worked in McDonald's for four years, and, you know, you're constantly getting <laughs> rotating staff all the time. So what I do is I, I, I pick moments and I make an attempt to share the gospel with every single person, and I share it with the, uh, the franchisee owner, I share it with the business manager, you know, in the office. And so I really think, like, you know, don't hide away from it yeah because sometimes because one of the things is you share the gospel and, and sometimes there's that there's that conflict and i've been in there where the people are literally it's almost like they're, they're you know it's almost like their the face is like turning they're, they're just really angry from from listening and don't allow that to put you off you know because mm-hmm. that they'll be far more angry that you didn't tell them when they're standing in front of them why didn't you tell me mm-hmm. you let me go on in my block you know because my brother he, he lost his eyesight a few years ago but the thing is, for all the years, my mom, my brother, the doctors, well, Craig, you need to look after your diet. If you don't, you'll go blind. And now he's blind because he didn't look after his diabetes. Now he said, I regret that, that I didn't change my mind back then. People don't realise it now, but one day they're going to regret and actually they're going to mm-hmm. wish the Christians really would have Bible bashed them. Yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? They, they, someone made a video that said they're going to wish you'd actually forced it down their throat. Yeah. So the, the only thing is that, you know, are you willing to be uncomfortable and, you know, and yeah, that's right. to, to do that? And, and that it depends how far you want to yeah. go with that. And so from time to time, I'd share the gospel every day and I'd pick moments, you know, some people really didn't want to know. Uh, but then again, I'd try again, you know, maybe a later date and I'd go. You can introduce it in different ways. Um, so that's what I do. Yeah. Sometimes they, they really, you know, really get angry. And just yeah. Why not. yeah, in my environment, I worked as a social worker for several years and mm-hmm. we sat in that office, like that's close office environment. Mm-hmm. And you know, one of the good things for me, I had an on fire, fiery manager who was a, a, who got radically saved, it was awesome. So we would both have the, he gave me like the liberty to share <laughs> because he was, over, he was a manager over us. But what I want to say is this, is that God always opened up opportunities even to drop in nuggets of, about Jesus. You know, like, you're not there to really, in your workplace, to go in there and, well, you are, but you're not. You're there to do a job. Yeah. And you're there to represent Jesus in your in model of life. And what I found was people would say and see, like, you're yeah. different. One person right. said, there's a spirit on you, like it's like a spirit that you carry. Mm-hmm. There's something about you that's different. Mm-hmm. And I was then able to say, well, this is Jesus. Mm-hmm. And, yeah. and it, it, we witness in that way in the workplace, yeah. but also yeah. what I want to say is God opened opportunities for me to preach the gospel too. Mm-hmm. And also one of my colleagues who was an atheist who hated God, like he, was, he hated the fact that I loved Jesus. He hated the fact mm-hmm. that I was a follower of Jesus. By the end of the time that he left the workplace, he actually said to me that his like, experience of working alongside me, and we were taught daily about the things of God, he, he actually it changed his views on yeah. Christianity. Mm-hmm. He's an atheist, and yeah. watched Darren Brown and all this stuff. But So I want to say this is, we're called to be a witness of Jesus mm-hmm. Christ, mm-hmm. but also apply wisdom in how much you preach the gospel in the workplace because you're also there to to do a job that's my view yeah like share the gospel yeah but also yeah. let them see your life yeah the workplace somebody just swearing said something yeah. isn't working and they said um oh jesus christ and i said yes he's here right now yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he can make it work so, yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. so he did 
then it started working. Oh, and then, yeah. Come on, right. it's got a few years before it's using. Yeah, yeah. 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 that's awesome. Something similar happened um, oh. for me actually. I, I, I was in the work staff room, there was about 100 colleagues there, and the Lord. Um, this woman come in, she sat next to me and the Holy Spirit said, tell her, tell her about, about me. So I was like, okay. So I started to say, hey, I want to tell you, I'm, I'm a Christian, Jesus changed my life. She goes, I'm a Christian as well. And then she started to tell me how she's got this problem with her voice box where in like a few years time, she's not going to be able to speak. She's going to lose the use of her voice fully. I said, I'm going to pray, I need to pray for you. God told me to pray for you. So I put my hand on her chest, on her voice box. I said, in the name of Jesus, I just proclaim healing. And as she, as I'm praying for her, her voice box opens. She goes, oh, something just popped in my voice box. This woman to this day is, is still, she's got no problems with the voice. But the whole of the office saw that happen, you know. So we're there to be a witness. Can I share something quick? Because you've reminded me. Yeah. <laughs> um, I'm, I'm now 84 years young, so wow. I'm just going to tell you that my stepfather, in who lived in Australia with my mum, who got married at 79, he used to call God's name in vain. And I love Jesus. I said, you know, Arthur, every time you say, Jesus Christ, he's saying, yes, Arthur, what do you want? <laughs> and I said, he said, no. I said, that's right. I said, that because I said, every time you're calling Jesus Christ, you're getting his attention. And he's hoping one day you're going to say that you want to know him. And then he told me the story of when he was on, in a Navy officer on a ship, on, um, on night shift. There was this terrible storm. And he was washed overboard. And people overboard at that time in the war, because they were escorting merchant ships and stuff, they would not go back for you. And I said, and what happened? He said, the next wave washed me back on. And I said, Arthur, how can you deny God when that's happened to you? Come on, you haven't got long to live. You've got cancer, come on. Invite him into your life now, before you die, because I want to see you in heaven one day. And he's forgiven you for all your sins, everything you've ever did, and how you've been. And you can know him through and through. So that's Amen. Awesome. We, we have another Q and A session this afternoon. So any other questions that you have, you can ask them this afternoon for the next the Q and A session. But I'm going to go into a break now, right? Yeah, another time to hug each other, have teas and coffees. Um, <laughs>